How's it going guys? In today's episode we are going to build a pretty cool 441 cubic inch LS engine. Every great engine needs a great foundation. So for this build we're going to use Dart's SHP aftermarket engine block. This block has a couple really nice upgrades that make it very nice and special over a factory block. My favorite one is the fact that it has a three galley oil system. Factory LS blocks only have a two galley system, which means the camshaft and the mains, which oil the crankshaft, have to share a galley with one bank of the lifters. The three galley block design gives the cam and mains its own galley, giving better oil flow through the engine. The next is the fact that this block uses a six bolt cylinder head pattern for extra clamping force. Now this engine is going to be naturally aspirated. The sixth bolt, the fifth and sixth bolt probably aren't required, but we've got them, so let's use them. Another thing I really like about these blocks is they come with splayed center billet steel main caps. By splaying the outer bolt, you very greatly increase the structural rigidity of this block and the way that the crankshaft is supported and held in place by the main cap. Let me show you an example of what I mean by splayed. So this is the number one main shaft, main cap, excuse me, on this block, and this is the number two. And you can see these outer bolts kick off at an angle, splayed bolts, very strong system. The crankshaft for this build is a center counterweighted 4.125 stroke LS crank. So the center counterweights really help on higher RPM combinations by distributing the balance much more efficiently through the crankshaft. At real high RPM or really high horsepower, the crankshaft, instead of turning straight all the way, the middle of it might start to bow like this, kind of. That makes sense if you like that motion. And these center counterweights help to eliminate that and give us a much straighter, truer running crank. Moving on to the camshaft, the brain of this engine, we're running a hydraulic roller comp cam. It's 247 on the intake, 258 on the exhaust, on a 112 lobe separation angle with three degrees of advance built into the motor. It also has a pretty stable valve ramp on it because this is going into a street-driven C6 Corvette, so it's gonna see a lot of miles. We don't want a super aggressive race cam, but we do want some duration under her to get some thump. Of course, we're running our Smetting H-Beam 4340 forged rod, topped off with some JE2618 coated pistons. This engine with a flat top 5cc dish piston and our 11 degree LS3 cylinder head will have 11.9 to one compression. So right on the very edge of what I would feel comfortable running in a pump gas street car. I think this customer is gonna set it up on flex fuel so he can put E85 in it, maybe sprinkle a little more timing on top and take advantage of the extra compression. I have already blueprinted this whole engine. Because it's naturally aspirated and because we have a lot of really strong parts going into a really strong engine block, I'm running it a little tighter than you guys might expect. I've got about 2.0 on the mains, 1.8 to 2.0 on the rods, and my rings are gapped 20 on top, 22 on the second. I have also already balanced this center kind of weighted crankshaft, so we are ready to start assembling the motor.
I really like these snap-on wrenches because they actually count for you. So if you're questioning yourself of whether you did all 20 bolts, you've got a little counter. Kind of cool. Now that everything is torqued, we want to come back and put a little paint mark on our fasteners. That way, if for whatever reason you need to walk away or something, anyone who comes to the motor next knows that all of these are torqued and final installed. See how the crank feels? Oh yeah, super smooth, no hiccups. Next, we're gonna check thrust clearance, which is the crankshaft's uh, backwards and forwards clearance in the block. Get a little dial indicator on here, like so. Big flathead. All right, pull it back, push it forward. We've got 5 thou thrust clearance. That's a great number. Pretty much, if depending on horsepower rating, uh, if you've got a, well, let's just run through it real quick. Good rules of thumb. If it's a naturally aspirated uh, street engine, nothing too super crazy or radical, you can run it down as tight as three to four thousandths thrust. Five is kind of my ideal spec for a street engine, um, even up to a potentially 700 horse uh, combination. If it's a drag race motor that's got like a big converter in it and it's leaving on a trans brake and it's smacking it with a lot of uh, converter charge pressure, you were going to want to increase that thrust clearance maybe to almost up to eight thousandths. Uh, but for a street motor, five thou is awesome. Crank's got a little bit of wiggle room in it. Um, the next thing I want to show you guys is the crankshaft position sensor in relation to the reluctor wheel when you run this dart block. Okay, so in here, you can see our reluctor wheel, and here's our crankshaft position sensor. Goes into the block. A lot of people post that Dart has a lot of issues with this spacing being incorrect. I kind of want to debunk that. If you push this in, and you push it, and give it a nice solid thud, it will drop right into place and have very tight clearance. The size of the hole in the Dart block around let me show you guys. Around this upper plastic ring is very tight. So sometimes if that plastic is a little too big or has a burr on it, it won't sit all the way flush against the block, causing you to have a massive gap between the, the sensor and the reluctor. And a lot of people will see that and think it's a block issue when they're just not pushing this in all the way. Um, something else I've done, if it's really tight and I can't get it in with my hands, is I come right on the back side of the sensor, right in here with a tiny little flathead punch, and just give it a nice love tap, and you'll hear it drop into place. To help support the camshaft timing set, we have a thrust bearing that goes on the back of the gear that's gonna ride up against the thrust plate of the engine. We're just going to run this camshaft straight up because it already has a few degrees of advance built into it. I personally like to run a little bit of Loctite on LS camshaft bolts as well. It doesn't hurt, it can only help. And again, do a little paint mark on here so we know everything is torqued and ready to go. I like to grab the camshaft then, do a little wiggle check. You should feel it has some thrust. You should feel a little bit of play in it. I'm not going to put a gauge on it, but just a little check to make sure it's there. And now we can install our oil pump. We're going to run the Melling 10295 standard volume high pressure pump for this engine's application with the Copo Camaro spring installed. So, line it up, pull it up onto the engine, and I'm gonna show you guys the way that I like to install the LS pumps. Um, this is the way that we do it at our shop. We've built, I can't even count how many LS engines installing the pump this way, and have never had a failure. So, 
with a little Loctite on the bolts. I thread them all in, and I get them hand tight, and I back it off a tiny bit just to crack it loose. I'll show you why in a second. So we're running it up, hand tight, crack it loose, and the pump should have a tiny little bit of wiggle room you'll be able to feel. Then take some regular break-in oil, put a few pumps down the pump, and now we're going to rotate the crankshaft over a few times, and by doing that we're going to kind of line up everything inside that oil pump, effectively getting it aligned. So now we'll just spin it over a few times, get your torque wrench, and torque them down right where they are. I have already installed the Copo pressure spring, which is going to increase the base pressure from about 65 to 85. And now that those are torqued, what do we do? We mark them. Now you've got a pump that's aligned, everything spins over super nice, and we can carry on with our build. Clean assembly is obviously vastly important, and I have already gone through and scrubbed the heck out of this block. We just use a red shop rag with some brake clean, and just really scrub the cylinders with your hands until the rag comes out clean, and then come back with some compressed air, blow all that lint away, and your bores are clean. These are plateau honed as well. So out of the hone, they are super clean compared to traditional um, stone honing. So we're just gonna throw on a glove, grab our can of break-in oil, and give all eight cylinders a generous coating of oil so that the piston rings and the pistons can immediately start on some break-in oil, pretty simple. Uh, we use the Driven BR40 oil for this as our break-in oil for assembly. short block is now complete. It's assembled. It spins over super smooth. Let's flip it over and take a look on top. Check out those pistons looking so wheat. Here, I want to get you guys off the tripod and show you this. Rings are in, the rings are in this motor and look how clean the cylinder walls look. A lot of that's in part to the plateau hone that we use with our Rottler H85AX. Super crazy good surface finish. No burrs anywhere. 
the rings are leaving no marks on the cylinders. Now I want to roll it over and show you guys the uh, piston skirt, how far it comes out of the hole on this dart block, or how little I should say. So let's watch cylinder number five here. It's on its downstroke, pokes its head out just a little bit, and goes back up. These dart blocks have a much, much longer sleeve extension on the bottom than the factory GM blocks. So you can run a massive 4.125 stroke crankshaft in here. And the piston, honestly guys, has more support in here than a four inch crank does in an LS3 block. The sleeves are so much longer. That's why there's really nothing to be scared of when running a 4.125 stroke crank in these aftermarket dart blocks. I really don't recommend it in factory blocks because that sleeve is so short. You would see basically almost half of that skirt hanging out of the bore, but with the aftermarket block, it's ready to go. All we've got left to do now is seal off the short block, put timing cover on, rear cover, oil pan. Uh, we've got a windage tray for it as well. So we're gonna mock that up, see what kind of clearancing we need. And we will be on our way. The last few things we gotta do after that are gonna be check our deck height so we can order the correct thickness head gaskets to give us 40 thousandths quench because this is an NA only engine. If it was gonna run a little bit of nitrous, I might open that up to about 50 thou, but NA only deals, 40 is perfect. And then throw our Gatorman link bar lifters in. So we're almost there. Okay, back on the 441, it's actually a new day now. We have these nice little billet standoffs that adapt the dart block to use an OEM style windage tray. Pretty cool. So this windage tray is specially made to clear the 4.125 stroke that this engine has. And first, before we seal up the timing cover and the oil pan, we want to check the pickup tube, excuse me, the pickup tube's depth in relation to the pan. So we're going to mock this up lightly and just lightly bolt everything into place. Then I'm going to install the pan and we'll measure the depth from the top of the pickup tube to the bottom of the pan. So we'll just snug these two bolts up. Snug up this nut back here. With no washers or anything on it, just to give it the deepest it can possibly be. And I usually don't worry about installing the gasket for this stage. You know it's about an eighth inch thick, so I just kind of factor that into my thickness. And the easiest way that I have found to do this is with a piece of tape. Just tape off the pickup tube. And then I get a piece of just molding clay. Pop her on. Make a little, little TP out of her, a little pyramid. And then carefully Set your oil pan down, making sure you don't disturb that piece of clay. And then we're going to squish it and seat the pan to the block if we can. Alright, let's take this off now. Let's see what we've got. So it looks like we're kind of perfect. We've got currently, if we peel this back, maybe 3 16 almost a quarter inch. And then when we install that eighth inch thick pan gasket, we'll have pretty much exactly 3 8 which is perfect. So now we're good to continue with the build, take our tape off, and we'll come back, lock tight these two bolts, final install the windage tray, and we will be good to go. Obviously before we final install the windage tray, make sure that the connecting rods and the stroke clears, I've already checked it, so we'll carry on with this build. This o ring. Should have probably done this the first time around. We'll reseat this back in. And like I said, I always put a little bit of Loctite on these tiny two little bolts to help secure them into place. 
Just makes sense. Almost done with the 441 short block. Next step is going to be installing the timing cover. I always put a little bit of sealant in the corners above and below the gasket. Just makes me feel good. Lightly snug up the first couple bolts here. And then we have a little alignment puck because these timing covers don't have a dowel. So let's slide that into place next. That lines up the seal around the crankshaft. And then I just check the flats on the timing cover, make sure they line up with the block. So a little bit of wiggle room to play with. And then zip it down. And then we can final torque cover is installed. Just like that. Last step, oil pan, same deal. I like to put a little bit of RTV in the corners above the gasket bridges. Just a little bit of insurance, team no leak over here. And we've got our nice gasket installed like so. Now we can install our oil pan. Just like that. On these oil pan bolts, I always, for any engine, recommend starting all of them, get them all threaded to help line up the gasket and the pan on the block before you tighten or torque a single one. Just like that. That way we know everything is perfectly lined up and ready to go together. Personally, I like to do a couple passes. Um, LS pans aren't bad because they're cast and they have an O-ring uh, aluminum shim gasket, but small block engines with their big rubber gaskets and stamped steel oil pans will kind of settle and you'll have to retort the bolts. But in this case, all of these are still super tight, didn't budge, so probably not needed, but okay, that one moved a little bit. Doesn't look good now. Okay, we are done working on the bottom of the motor. Flip her over. And the last thing I need to do to wrap up this video for you guys is check our deck height on the motor so we can order the correct thickness head gasket to give us exactly 40 thou quench. Because this is going to be a NAS gas rated only engine, so. Let's put a little bit of quench in her, help get a little bit more compression, get that fuel atomized. Now this motor rotates over so smooth, so that's a nice short block. And we'll bring her up nice and slow. And we are 10 in the hole. Rock the piston a little bit, make sure there's nothing 
funky going on. All right, we're 10 in the hole. So I'm gonna order a 30 thousandths thick head gasket. We've got an iron block. It's not gonna change at all. If it was an aluminum block, the aluminum's gonna expand. I estimate probably four to six thou. So on aluminum motor, if I wanted 40 thousandths and I was 10 in the hole, I would try to get a 25 thou thick head gasket because when that block expands, it's gonna lift the head off the motor. It's gonna gain some quench. Iron, it's not moving, so we'll shoot it straight. Get some 30 thou head gaskets. And in the next video, we can finish this monster up.